Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles, where I'm continuing to bring you the World Puzzle Federation puzzles, and this time it is the 2015 Round 4 set, and this is Classic Sudoku 2 from that set. Now, these puzzles were set by Jan Morowski. Um, I definitely butchered that name, and I've got some corrections for yesterday. First of all, yesterday's puzzle was worth 15 points, not 20. This is a puzzle that was worth 20 points. So, uh, sorry about that one, and sorry about to Jan about not having your name on yesterday today's video. So yeah. Um, but everything else I tried to bring you was correct. Um, and yeah, that that's what I'm, I'm doing. Now, uh, let's, this is another classic Sudoku in the series, and I'm going to work this one through. Now, one of the other things I've done is I have been speaking to my testers, and they've recommended that I do some of these not as blind solves. So that is probably going to be the case. Some of the puzzles in this set I have um, flagged that I am probably going to look up the tricks in advance so I can actually try and present the puzzle because apparently because they were designed to be solved using um, the bifurcation technique, the logic in them is actually really tricky and quite tri hard to find. At least my testers found it that way. So in order to be able to present you uh, an interesting puzzle, um, that might be the way I have to proceed. Um, I'm working with a few people on this one just to try and bring you the puzzles. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this works. So uh, when we get to those ones, this is not one of them. Uh, we'll see what you think in the comments. Let's have a look at Classic Sudoku 2 from World Puzzle Federation Round 4. Um, so again, normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. Um, and I will try and go through how the notation works and everything again. If you... Um, I did in the first set I did, which was round three, the earlier videos, I've gone through a lot more detail about how it works. So um, if you're struggling, you can always go to the earlier videos in that set to, uh, to try and get that explanation. I'm going to restart my puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. So I can see twos are a bit more restricted. So oh, well, I can see ones are a bit restricted because I was always told start with ones. And I can see, for example, one has to go in one of those two cells, but that's about all I get. But twos are a bit more restricted because two in box seven has four twos looking at it. All of these twos are looking into the box, restricting it from all of these cells. So two has to go into the middle of this box. But that's all I'm, well, actually, yeah, that's all I'm really seeing with twos. So where else am I looking? Eights, well, eight is a restricted. This eight is knocking eight out of those. This eight is knocking eight out of those. This eight is knocking eight out of there. So eight has to go here. And now eight in box five is very restricted because it can't go in any of those. So eight goes here. Now eight has only got two places in box two because of the eights looking in. So, oh, and these two eights are looking down, meaning this is the eight, which means eight only has two places in box seven, but this eight is looking down, knocking out that one. So this becomes the eight, which looks up saying that's not the eight, this is the eight, and I've now done all of the eights. So... Am I getting something like naked singles somewhere? Because this is something I that is often used in these sorts of competitions, um, such as this cell can't be one, two, three, four, five. I think it can be six or seven. Spotting naked singles is often an important trick for these. So three and three can't be in any of those or that one. Three is in one of those two. Uh, one can't be in any of those. So one is in one of those. Yeah, why is one in this row? The only place I could put it is there. So this is actually a triple now because it can't be one, two, this is six, seven, and nine. So these are all six, seven, and nine, which means these four digits can't contain six, seven, or nine, but I'm not sure how to use that yet. They are two, three, four, and five. Well, this can't be two or three, so that's four or five. 
but I'm not. One in this column is in one of those two. So these are one, three, uh, one, three, four, and nine. So this is only one or four because it can't be three or nine. Three is in one of those two because of the threes looking into the box. Six is not in any of those. So because six can't is looking in. So six is in one of those two, which means this is a six. And this is now a triple, which is one, four, five. These are one, four, five. That can't be a one. And that can't be a five. So five is in one of those two, making that a five. So five is not in any of those now. Five. Well, nine is in one of these. Two. Oh, yeah. Six, seven, oh, six is down here. Nine is in one of those two. This is a seven, nine pair because seven and nine are in there. Seven and nine are in there. This is seven and nine. So what are these? These are two, three, six. Well, there's no two or six there. That's the three. And this is a two, six. So this can't be a three anymore. This is the three. This has to be a four or a five to complete the row. And the four is looking up, making that the five, that the four, which makes that the one and that the five. And this, for multiple reasons, is a four. And this is the two that hasn't been placed in the box, which puts two in one of those two. That's very cool. I like that. There is now a triple in column nine, which is one, four, nine. Okay, that has not obviously helped me. Five is in one of those two cells because I can't put five here or here or here, which puts five in one of those two cells, but that five is looking across making that the five, which means this is the five, which puts five in one of those two cells, but that five says not there, so that is the five which puts, means this is not the five, this is the five. And that's all the fives, I think. Six is in one of these two now, because I can't put six here or here or here, which puts six in one of those two. This is just a pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a four, seven pair. So this is now a triple because I can't use four or seven. So it's one, three, nine. Well, I'm not putting a one there. I'm not putting a three there. It didn't help me as much as I thought. What's the triple in this column? Three, four, nine. So this is three or four. And this is three, four, or nine. Okay, I'm over pencil marking, I feel. Although often, this is the other thing that happens with these puzzles, is you often feel, get to the point where it feels like you need to over pencil mark. And this might be why um, you'll notice this is calling out um, how awesome Mark Goodliffe is been competing in these, these competitions for all of the 10 years that the results have been announced. And he does quite well. And everyone comments, oh, he over pencil marks. And often that might be because he's looking for the hidden triples and everything in order to be able to solve quickly. Whereas if you don't do that, finding those hidden triples um, and the, the, hidden, um, the, 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 the hidden reveals that you often need to find in order to solve puzzles like this can be quite tricky. Um, we can see four has to be in one of these because of the four looking up. Seven is in one of these two. And I'm not sure if he's developed the habit for that reason, but um, it definitely helps when you put pencil marks in because you might find a hidden triple that is just not visible. Like if there's a hidden triple in this row, would I find it without pencil marking? I don't know. I may not. Other really good solvers might be able to. What I can see is I haven't put six and seven in here, and this can't be a six. So this is a naked single seven, making that the six. Taking the six out of those, this becomes a seven nine pair. So two is in one of those two. That's not it, is it? But I am starting to get some of these boxes quite full. 
but I'm not quite seeing where the powerful restriction is. Well, I kind of am. Four is in one of those two. Right, four is in one of those two. So I can't put four here or here. So four is in one of those two. This four is saying not there. So this is the four. So this is not the four. Four is down in one of those two. This is only one or nine. But this row is only missing three digits now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, and nine. So this has to be only one or two. This can't be one or two. That's the nine, which displaced a seven. So that's a seven, which displaced a six. So that's a six. This isn't a nine. This is a three, four pair. This has to be a one or a two now, but what's important is the three, four pair is looking down, making that the nine, which displaced the three, making that the three. The nine means that this is the one. That is really important because that removes the nine from here. Maybe it's not really important. It felt really important. I haven't put a three in this box and I can't put one there or in either of those cells. So that becomes the three. Looking across, making that the four and that the three. The four says that's not the four, so that is the four. This hasn't displaced anything, but these are one, two, and six. And there's, oh, the two is what I need for the row. So this can't be uh, two. So this is the one and this is the six. The six is looking down saying that's not the six. This is the six. So I haven't put seven or nine in this column. And in this column, I haven't put one seven or nine. So where's the one in this column? It's not there. This is the one, and this is also seven or nine. The one looks across making that the four, which looks back making that the seven and that the four. The four says this isn't the four. This is a one or a nine, and I haven't put one seven or nine into this row. So this is one seven or nine. So this is one, two or not. This is a one, nine pair in the row. So this is the two looking down, making this the six and this the two. So this can't be the six anymore. This is the six and this is one, seven or nine. But in this box, you can see the only place I can put the seven is in one of those two looking up, making that the nine and that the seven looking down, taking nine out of those. That's the one, seven. So this has to be the nine, which looks up, making that the one and that the nine. The nine looks across, making that the seven and that the nine. The seven looks back, making that the one and that the seven. The seven looks up, making that the nine and that the seven. And that is the correct solution. 10 minutes and 19 seconds. Now, this was a 20 point puzzle. So for a practice speed, you were aiming for, what was it, five points a minute? I was aiming for four minutes. So again, bit under triple. I'm okay with that while I was trying to explain and everything. If I can do a 20 point puzzle in 10 minutes, I'm okay with that. So my goal on these, I suppose, would be about um, 10 minutes per 20 points. I don't think from what I've been told, I'm probably not going to get that for some of the 80 point puzzles. Some of them are apparently absolutely brutal. Um, one of my testers apparently took over an hour for to try and find the logical proof for one of the puzzles. Um, yeah, it... Uh, and when I was talking to a solver about it, they said, oh, yeah, you get to a point where there's nothing obvious and you just try something. That's the way you speed solve. See how it all goes. Fun stuff. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hope you're enjoying the puzzle series. And as always, good luck with your solving.